Good day. My name is Steve Klenkowski. I'm a graduate student at Kansas State University, and I'm here to demonstrate the assembly of an L-Cell 3-electrode setup battery test unit. Uh, we purchased this from LCell.com for about $1,200, and it works fairly well at creating multiple use cells without having to uh, buy new fixtures or coin cell fixtures. Looking at it, it comes with our base clamp, which will hold the cell together, and looking at that, we'll assemble the cell. First off is the base of the electrode cell, which is this cup design. It has some grooves in there for sealing and other pieces to assemble into it. Um, this is kind of a piston type cell assembly in which it has a cotted, cotted sleeve, which has an O-ring on it that we'll place at the base. This creates the inner seal of the sleeve and which acts as the sleeve of the piston design cell. There's a specially designed cotter key in which it lines up with the sleeve groove and the grooves within the base. So assembling it with the O-ring going down, it assembles in and aligns with the keys of the base. To press it, to seat it, the sleeve into the base, you need to press firmly on the ring and press it down until it reaches the base. As I said, it also is a piston type, so at the top is the piston head in which it has its own O-ring and creates the top seal. This electrode design has two counter pins that actually create the electro con connection. The base pin screws into the base. This will contact our working electrode when we set it in. The electrode pins are replaceable and are recommended to be replaced every test cell. Uh, we use al uh, aluminum for our cathode materials and a copper for our anodic materials. On the top, we use this as a half cell, so we're using copper to contact our lithium pin, our lithium counter electrode, and using that, that screws into the piston top. These two pieces can be done before cementing into a vacuum or into a glove box chamber for ease of assembly and for device set, set right, and then addition. We have a special little setup that we go through, um, at least I do, in going that. With our electrode, I carefully take my tweezers and place the electrode into the bottom of our L-cell base. On top of that, we have a specially designed spacer ring that has some cleats on it. These cleats are designed to protect our electrode from being crushed. We have a nanowire design in which we do not want to crush those wires, so this acts like a special cleat to protect those and will not allow anything to touch the main power of the electrode. The edges where it does contact the electrode will be crushed but the amount of area that those are to be exposed to are minimal to our aerial design. After seating that into the ring, we place the fiberglass spacer that comes with the L-cell package. And on top of that, we would place our lithium counter electrode, which being outside, I would not do. So simulating that will be this piece of stainless steel. On top of that, we can also, on top of the lithium, I recommend putting a piece of stainless steel so you get better contact throughout the lithium instead of having a single point contact with the lithium foil in which you might get corrosion or other issues in the counteractivity. When we've all assembled, we can take the piston and place it on top of our, into the sleeve, and this is where you're going to have to forcefully push a little pressure to get it all to seat properly. Being that the sleeve is 18 millimeters in diameter, all my pieces are cut to 18 millimeters or a slightly less. Uh, 11 sixteenths is the closest in American, and that actually provides me a little ease of assembly. So applying the piston in, I can assemble the cell to almost a full state. Uh, before we go into more, uh, we can look at assembling the actual top. With this cell design to create pressure onto the cell, it acquires this gold-coated spring 
and which also has a polyethylene spacer or a sealing ring to protect the entire device and make it airtight. With the lid that is provided, it is highly a spring, and this is where you have to press and be a little careful to get it slipped into the clamping device. The clamp is then tightened, making sure the cover is seated well with the polyethylene ring, and barely just hand tight to make sure it's a good fit. After that method, with the L-cell comes this little adapter to insert an electrolyte. Uh, this can be purchased online for parts too if you don't need one. Uh, you're the best. With having electrolyte into the syringe, you can actually inject electrolyte into the syringe. And by doing this, I recommend tipping the cell actually up on its side and pulling on it to remove air and then allowing the syringe to come back in to inject more electrolyte. So keep pulling on the syringe, pulling out air, and then allowing the syringe to go back in. Do this a couple times, allowing the electrolyte to pull out as much air within the cell and replacing it with electrolyte of your choice and will be the best of fit. As with this, we need a third electrode for our reference electrode and thus this design allows us to actually insert a small piece of lithium into where our injected electrolyte is. So having a little electrolyte left over, I usually take a piece of towel and try to dry out the, at least the, the threaded portion of it. And then taking a piece of lithium on top of our, inside of our bench table on our glove box, I take this syringe. They sell this on lcell.com as a full L-cell loader, but I found a simple syringe, a needle that is cut off, and a stainless steel tip bit that is left to length and stabbed into the main part of the syringe allows us to inject lithium as easy. On L-cell, it's about 300 some dollars. This is about $2 worth of materials. So a lot of savings there. Taking this, we can place this and stab into our lithium that is very soft, creating a little plug inside our needle. We guide this into the hole that is on the L-cell and then pressing down on the syringe, lightly holding the base, we push the syringe and pushing out the lithium into the hole. We do the, I do this once or twice to get a good amount of lithium in the hole and allowing that then we can insert the reference electrode pin contact into the threaded portion. Just making sure that's hand tight, checking the bottom pin, this cell is complete. The cell is usually transferred to our testing chamber where we do our CP, CV, and other analysis tests. If you have any other questions, you can email me at sklank at ksu.edu.gov.